Hi, I'm VJ Karana. Welcome to My Australia, the show about people from overseas having Australian experiences. On today's show, Tiara gets into the unusual sport of roller derby, Sue Hassini goes to a traditional Aussie bush dance, and Gustav shows his artistic talents at a market. Sport can sometimes feel like it's dominated by men, but our first guest, Tiara, is about to check out a sport where women are leading the way. I'm from Johor, the southern part of Malaysia. My parents migrated from Bangladesh. I was always a weird kid, I suppose. It was funny because I did start talking till I was about four, and then I never stopped. I loved reading. I read everything around the house. I got onto computers when I was two years old. I came here to do a degree in creative industries. And then after the degree ended, I started doing performing work and some opportunities came up. So I hung around and explored them further. Mark and I met in college. He is an Australian student. He came from Toowoomba. And we've been together about four years. We live right near the river, so there's a city cat, there's buses nearby. It's very convenient, very easy to get around. I do performance art and I incorporate things like burlesque and circus and physical theatre and comedy, often to either relate personal stories about my life or things that I'm passionate about politically and socially. I know I was queer since I was a teenager, but there wasn't a lot of resources you could go to find out more, especially in a country that's quite conservative. So when I came here, sort of trying to work that out for myself, at first I wasn't quite sure where to go, I was a little worried someone might tell on me or might cause trouble, but you know, slowly I found that you know, people here, firstly they respect your privacy, and secondly they're all really helpful and open. Uh, you know, the audition form, mm -hmm. like if you could change any part of your body, what would you change? I co-host a radio show called Mega Has, which is a feminist and woman rights radio show. It's on a Brisbane community radio channel called 4 Z. In Australia, there are more opportunities for women to really be confident and outspoken. I think it's just a lot freer for women to really be themselves. And because you see all these other women getting out there, taking on, you get inspired and you join them. We are at the Skateaway skating rink, half an hour away from Brisbane, because I'm going to try on roller derby for the first time. I have a few friends that do roller derby, and they're always going on and on about how confident they feel and how it's such a great sport and how all their friends support them. The sort of energy I appreciate from performing, they appreciate roller derby. So I wanted to see what it's all about and have some fun and do something a little bit outside of my comfort zone. Um, I know there's slammers and jammers and there's one person with a symbol on their helmet that has to get through all the other people and the other people have to stop them. And you know, you also have the things about having your own costume and having a funny name. Little tiny rules like that that just make it, you know, more, a lot more interesting than just a bunch of people on all the skates. <laughs> uh, you know, um, I'm not very stable on skates and I'm, you know, I'm worried I might break a bone somewhere. <laughs> I don't know, I was partly excited but also partly scared. <laughs> so when I saw the demo when they were starting the game, wow, I was wondering how the referees would keep track of what's going on. Like it just the beginning, people were still falling over and being hit on and we were like, oh no, can you imagine in a real game how vicious that would be? <laughs> Fresh Meat is a term we use uh, affectionately for our new recruits. Today we're having a Fresh Meat intake, so essentially this is where we test all their skills and get an idea of what level they're at. Oh, when I first got on the rink, it was really awkward because I hadn't been on roller skates since like 10 years ago. So trying to balance on the wheels and trying not to fall, and then you're trying to remember that you have to bend down and keep low. It's a little bit awkward, but I haven't fallen yet. It was quite intimidating and a little bit scary just trying to move around and, you know, you sort of think, oh yeah, if you fall, you've got protection, but at the same time, you don't really want to fall. 
Bunny was trying to give me some advice and she was saying about how when you're first starting you think the wall will give you confidence but sometimes it robs you of your confidence because you don't really know how, what your strengths are. She was talking about how I seem to be a lot better away from the wall. And it sounded like a thing for life that sometimes you think the props or the crutches are helping you but really they're sort of holding you back from when just putting yourself out there. But it's something to think about. <laughs> You don't get judged on anything but you know your attitude when you're out on the track so once you strap on skates then we're all the same basically it really just depends on you know how hard you hit and how much you can take a hit really ah, yeah. <laughs> also the amazing thing about roller derby is the more you play the more comfortable you feel in hot pants her name's the unforgiving bunny and she took that name because it represented that she's cute but menacing. Is there a, a theme in a lot of the derby names she mentioned, like taking maybe even childish things or things that were innocent and subverting them? Really, I thought that was really clever. Cinderella and Skid Vicious and Dame Shirley Bashy, and, and I wonder if any of them sort of get inspired by drag names or burlesque names. They have that same sort of funny humor to them. Even the day before, I was thinking, oh no, what am I getting myself into? Because I was so worried I would injure myself or just, you know, be so behind that I wouldn't enjoy it. But, you know, it was good that the team and Bunny and everyone else was so helpful. You know, they were so friendly with newbies. And it was great to sort of see myself just get better and better at it. It gets a little bit easier as you go along, but my knees and my back are really starting to hurt. Because it's not every day that you walk around half bent. <laughs> One thing that Jedi and a lot of the other skaters suggested is to just do a lot more skating. So take, learn to skate classes or do social skating. You know, even if it's like on your backyard or at a netball court, just to get more skating experience because that's really the best way to improve. I could see myself doing this possibly. I just, I suppose part of it is just remembering not to get too scared because I managed today. I mean, I was getting better today than I thought I would be, so who knows? You know, I fell a few times, but it was always a safe fall, and I didn't break anything. I might wake up tomorrow with a sore muscle or something, but you know, it's all good. My hamstrings, my poor hamstrings. <laughs> I wrote a derby name for me. Probably like the awkward turtle. <laughs> yes! I did it! Look, I'm sliding along. I love a sport where you get to give yourself a creative nickname. Well done, Tiara, or should I say, Menacing Rabbit. Let's check in with a more traditional Australian activity now. Suasini is off to a bush dance. My name is Suhasini. I come from Bangalore in India. As a child, I was very, uh, very shy. I hardly used to talk to anyone, even among my family. I would, they said I only spoke to my dad, mom, and grandmother, and no one else. I decided to come to Australia uh, because I'd finished my uh, bachelor's and uh, I was trying to, you know, look for work in the field of media. I live with uh, one friend. We share a two-bedroom uh, unit, about 15 minutes away from the city. Sometimes on my way to work, I uh, stop at the park and uh, do some breathing exercises. Hi, James. Good. Currently, I'm working at um, a market research uh, consultancy, so I do um, advertising research. What's still outstanding? Funnels. Funnels. Okay, great. Who's looking after them? I feel I'm a very friendly person, so I can make friends pretty easily. Uh, I found that in Australia, it's much easier to make friends. What did you do? What did you do? <laughs> I'm not married, like I'm a single person. It's, it's a big thing for an unmarried girl. I'm probably the first and only unmarried girl to have gone overseas to study before getting married. I have friends from uni, my friends I lived with before, friends at work. I go to a dance class, so I have friends from there. One. Two. I mean, even though I was shy, I wanted to always perform, like on stage, uh, either dancing or acting. And I joined this Bollywood dance class. 
it feels really, really good. I just enjoy myself dancing. I feel, you know, I can let go of everything. It's a form of expression as well. Sometimes I just feel like breaking out into a dance in the middle of nowhere, like on the, in a park or running around trees. It's really good. I've never been to a bush dance before. I mean, I do Bollywood dancing, but bush dance, I have no idea what it is. Uh, so yeah, I mean, I'm a bit nervous about that, actually. Bob Diamond. And this is April. Nice to meet you, Sue. Welcome to our bush dance. I mean, I love dancing, so any kind of dancing, I'm like uh, happy to do. So I'm, I'm really curious to find out what this dance is all about. I hope to have a bit of fun and learn a bit more, mainly learn a bit more about uh, Australian culture. Like I can see that people are dressed differently. I actually feel like I'm in a strange land now. I've never seen this kind of thing before. So I feel a little bit out of place. I've never actually participated in a fundraising event. So it, it should be good. I mean, uh, this is for a neonatal ward. Uh, they're raising funds, so it's for a good cause. And um, I'm grateful to my family and friends that I've, you know, never had any major problems in my life. So I would like to support as many causes as I can. have a lot of community spirit but um, I think in Australia it's different to that in India it's it's more about festivals and celebrating joys and sorrows and uh, there are lots of joint families in India so we you know live in big families so that's our community spirit is more about the family but in Australia I've seen that uh, it's more about different people and different households coming together for a cause and helping each other out I mean, it's a bit of a cliche, the, the Australian mateship thing, but, uh, but it really is, you know, we're a you know, community and people love getting together, support a good cause especially. There's a lot of people here who didn't know each other, but uh, we're all sort of friends and family groups, uh, extended family and people from mothers groups, people from, who, you know, who just saw the sign and decided to come along and support a really good cause. Uh, the atmosphere here is like really good for Lots of kids, lots of people, everyone's enjoying themselves. They're all here to support a cause, but you know, it's, it's mainly just about having fun and donating some money. And I think it's, you know, it's fantastic. Like I've never experienced anything like this before. It's great. So to some more dancing, hopefully I can get a few Bollywood moves in there. There was, there was a lot of cheesy stuff. Like in Bollywood, we have screwing the light bulb. These guys have peeling the banana. So, you know, <laughs> it's all good. Yeah, I'm having lots of fun. I want to keep going. <laughs> The band were really good. They they got people together and they, they taught us how to do the steps and, and uh, yeah got everyone to mingle with each other, change partners, so it was great. That's how I got to meet more people as well, so it was really good. When I was in primary school, we used to have to do this, and for our Year Seven graduation, it was part of part of the uh, the ceremony, and we had to dance with all of our parents. It was very embarrassing at the time, but I look back at it now, and I thought actually it was really good. <laughs> it was a fundraising event for the neonatal ward at the Royal Melbourne Hospital, um, and it, it was they they showed a video about uh, you know how the ward helps people and how. Uh, they need more money to um, have more machines in there to help children. So it's it's a great cause and it's really emotional uh, video that they showed. It really, so you know, I feel proud to be part of such a good event. I learned a bit more about Aussie culture. It, it, like I had, um, I experienced barbecuing sausages, uh, bush dancing, which uh, they said they do in schools and you know they grow up with. And uh, yeah, like just dressing like this makes me feel a bit more strange. <laughs> but I had no idea what I was doing, but it was fun. I think Sue's seen you in amazingly. Uh, I used to do this as a kid, and funnily enough, I, it's been a while, and she was teaching me how to do things, so <laughs> she was amazing. Yeah. I've changed a lot in the last five years. I've changed physically. I have long hair now. Um, I've become thinner. 
and I've changed mentally. I mean, I've become more outgoing. I've been able to fulfill some of my dreams like dancing and performing on stage. I've been able to do, um, fit a lot more into my life that I wanted to, so I feel much happier and, and more satisfied. That looked like a whole lot of fun, especially the hats. Coming up after the break, we'll meet the very talented Gustav and talk to people about hanging out at markets. Stick around. What do you like about being at the markets? About helping. You like to help? Mm -hmm. um, what have you been selling here? We sell macadamia nuts, flavoured and uh, retail packed macadamia nuts. What other stuff do you sell here? We sell every single vegetable that you can probably find and a lot of heirloom varieties as well. Yeah. Well, how did today go for you? Actually, surprisingly, it went really well. Um, it's the last markets for the year. Well, OK, so back to you. What's the strangest variety of apple that you've sold? Well, not strange, but um, one of the most interesting variety of apples we grow is a variety called Bonza, which was actually um, a chance seedling that was found in Batlow some 60 years ago. Well, what's the easiest thing to sell? Coffee. Good Australian grown coffee. What, what's the hardest thing about working here at the market? I don't know. They seem pretty easy. Everyone's rude for fun, they? Yeah. I have never bought samosas, but I find that it really strange that they sell samosas at a farmer's market because they don't they don't grow on a farm. And uh, Miss, what's the best thing about working here at the markets? Um, I think it's the friends that you make. Like, I mean, I've been doing it since I was seven. And I've got people who, like, I just did my HSC this year and people are just so generous with their time and, like, asking me how I'm going and it's just really lovely. Wow, I've got a really strong grip, this one. Really? <laughs> Muscles. <laughs> it's not an ice cream, silly. So markets sound like great places to spend some time. But how will our next guest go trying to sell his artworks at a market? Let's find out. Hi, my name is Gustav Un, and I'm from Kuala Lumpur, Malaysia. Well, there's mom and dad, and I have a younger brother, two years younger than me. His name is Hans. I live with my grandparents as well. Well, my grandma now. Every Friday and Saturday, our whole family comes over. All the uncles and all the kids. It's, yeah, it's a pretty big family. I have a dog. His name is Spike, and he's an English Cocker Spaniel. I miss him a lot. Sometimes I tear up when I think of him. I'm staying at the, at the shared house. It's got six bedrooms. So, funny enough, all six of us are Malaysians. Four guys and two girls. And it's only 15 minutes away from the university, walking distance. I'm studying at, at Curtin University in Perth, Western Australia. I'm doing a mass comm degree in film and advertising. When I'm not studying, one of the things I like to do to relax would be badminton. Wednesday and Fridays, we go to the tab, the uni tavern. It's, it's really convenient, it's safe, and you know, everyone's, everyone there's a uni student. So yeah, it's a pretty comfortable, fun place to hang out. And of course, there is this one thing that, yeah, it, most Malaysians are familiar with, Dota. If you don't know what Dota is, find out. It's, uh, it's, it's short for Defense of the Ancients. It gets very emotional sometimes. Friendships are put to, to the test. Uh, yeah, and, and you just keep going back for more. Get him, get him, get him! I got this idea of Australia, that Australia was more open, was more appreciative of the arts, of creativity, which Malaysia really just isn't. And I thought, okay, if I'm going, if well, I was in the performing arts scene. If I wanted to grow more, I would come to Australia. It'll give me more opportunities. When I got here, I thought, OK, the things to bring with me, I definitely have to bring my brushes, my ink, you know, my colours and rice paper. So I packed it all in. And when I got here, I discovered this place, Fremantle Markets. The Fremantle Markets is just amazing. You can find all sorts of art there. So I thought, okay, this, this is the place. This is the place to, to see where my art can take me. Hopefully we can sell some paintings. And yeah, I really don't know what's going to happen, but smiles on my face, confidence in my strokes, and all will go well. 
Well, we're setting up early and we're going for the whole day. So hopefully people will take an interest in what I do because it's, it's pretty different. It started in secondary school, high school, where one of my science teachers, his name is Mr. Chong, he sort of pulled us aside and just, he just announced in the class who would like to learn Chinese brush painting. And I thought, okay, I'll, pro I'll probably, probably give it a shot because I'm Chinese. This is Kevin. We've met, we met earlier this year. And yeah, she'll be here helping me deal with the uh, non-artistic aspects of setting up a booth and selling paintings. These are cherry blossoms. They're supposed to be pink, but this one's white. It's special. And yeah, bamboo and sparrows. This is my signature painting. Well, it's my signature flower, I guess. These are actually chrysanthemums. Now, chrysanthemums don't normally come in green or blue, but, well, if Mr. Chong has taught me anything, it's, you know, don't be a copycat. Don't, you know, don't do things that the way they've always done it, because then you're not an artist. You're just, yeah, you're just a copycat. You're a good replicator, not an artist. This one? Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. For sale. <laughs> I'm an artist myself. I paint and exhibit. But the way that he's loaded that uh, pencil brush up and then put the weight down on that side so that this is light as metal, it's fantastic. He's, he's, he's got the form there that's so beautiful. These are chrysanthem chrysanthemums. So um, what, what I did with this was I laid down the uh, brush strokes first, the outline, yep. and I coloured it in. Okay. And of course, uh, the leaves, What the, the trick to getting the, the veins of the leaves to yes. spread out just a bit is to wait till it's about 60 or 70% dry. Oh, okay. Yeah, if you do it too it's early, it spreads out too much. Uh, if it's too late, then it's obvious it's, you know, it's yeah, a blended. Yeah, excellent. <laughs> That's marvellous. Thanks very much. See you later. All right, see ya. Okay, bye. bye. Just the colours, how the reds and then you've got your butterfly on the end and just how it's just great. It just looks fantastic. Yeah, put it up somewhere nice at home. Hmm. But it needs to have birds in it. More birds? More if you want, but at least okay. two, yeah. I could do this one right here for you if you want. You like more birds? Now this painting, uh, a lady actually came up to me and special requested it. So she asked me to do it for a friend of hers who loves birds. And of course, for the birds to be brightly coloured, so doing my best to <laughs> suit, to uh, modify my, my style a bit. Next time you, you, handle, you handle the... Okay, okay, I'll leave it up to you. Thank you. Thank you. There you go, that's your change. As we were coming through the, through the markets, the boys just stopped and mesmerised. So. Yeah, the, the kids, they love this. I mean, it, it is really simple. Uh, two, and two fingers? Yeah, Chinese brush two, painting, it's really easy to learn. Three, All you need is an open mind. You've got to really accept two, the techniques that are taught. And it's so easy, even children can do it. And they love it. There you go. My name's Gustav, by the way. Okay. So, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, I love the birds. They are not for me, they are for my girlfriend. She is crazy about birds. And when I saw him doing that, I thought about her straight away. I said, oh, that's good for her. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Right, enjoy the painting. We had crowds of like 20 people, 20, 30 people when I was doing like the bamboo ones. So that was good, yeah. It's, uh, I didn't expect a reaction like that. I loved his work, yeah. I love the medium that he's using and he's actually doing it on real rice paper, so he told me. Ooh, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> thank you. The crowd here has been so supportive. They're asking questions. Um, I'm, I'm very pleased with the uh, interest that people have shown. 
And wow, I could definitely see myself doing this again. Ni jiao shen me ming zi. Okay, not bad. Those pictures were lovely, Gustav. I want to commission you to do one for my house. We'll talk. That's it for today's My Australia. Here's what's coming up next week. Tony faces his fears and goes swimming with sharks. Xiao Xiao takes her products out on the road to a makeup party, and Jasmine gets a makeover. See you then.